Hey card making friends, Sandy here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today to be sharing the Spellbinders new 3D emboss and cut embossing folders. Yes, they cut and emboss at the same time. They have this cool little ridge that the dies sit in just like this and then you place the paper over top, run it through your machine and voila, die cut and embossed at the same time. Also in this release, there's new dies, the arch labels and tag, the nested set of fresh picked labels and tag, and the scallop labels and tag. Also, two new wax seals, peony butterflies and forest mushrooms. These are quite lovely, and I'm going to be using the peonies today. Okay, so the dies fit into the side of the embossing folder that has the writing on it. You're going to open up and then Spellbinders recommends the cotton card panel cardstock. And of course this die is five and a half or this embossing folder is five and a half by eight and a half inches. And so I'm going to use a half a sheet. I'm spritzing it with my Mighty Mister spray on both sides and just laying in my dies you'll see that they kind of click in there and you can rub them back and forth and they don't move they're, then they're inside the ridges okay and then you're going to put your damp cardstock on top you're going to close the embossing folder and you're going to run it through the platinum six platinum or platform a on the bottom and then the d adapter on top and i like to run it through twice once each way just to make sure I'm getting really good embossing and cutting at the same time. And the reveal, ha oh, ha, look at this. Now how easy is that? Okay, so now we're gonna make three cards with these. And I got a couple of different ways to color them. Okay, I've gathered a bunch of positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamps. I have a bunch of blending brushes. Uh, some of these are Spellbinders, Waffle Flowers, Amazon. They're all round and small. Um, that's going to help us get into all the little nooks and crannies of these really deeply embossed panels. And I'm going to start with some teals. And I've sped this up because it's really time consuming to do this with the little brushes. So, but you're going to get the idea, right? I started with a lighter teal and I have all the colors listed uh, underneath this video and over on my blog for you. And as you can see, I'm just working my way around through the peonies, adding a base color. And you want to keep loading your brush and tapping it off so that you don't get big blobs. And we're going to come back with a darker color and highlight. So basically I'm working on the outside part of the petals. I'm not too worrying too much about what's closest to the center. And of course the center is going to be a different color. I've switched over to a larger brush. So this will move a little bit quicker on the very large peony in the top left hand corner. And there's some leaves and things stuck in there as well. And I've tried bigger brushes. I have a little bit more control with these ones, which is why I'm using them. But of course, whatever brush you've got will probably work. And, you know, we're not going to be exact on this. There's going to be some ink over in the background where I didn't really want it, but hey, what are you going to do? All right, so here's my darker of the teals. And again, I'm staying close to the center on these ones, uh, just adding a little bit of shadow, which adds a little bit more interest to the flowers. And of course, there's some little buds that haven't opened up yet there in the background and coming around. And with these deep embossed images, you really get the detail when you put the darker color in there. It really starts to pop. Okay, just finishing up. I'm switching over to a green now and we're going to do the leaves and I'm back to the smallest of the brushes just adding a bunch of green in. And I also did the border on this one in green because I knew I was going to do a teal background. <laughs> Two shades of yellow. We want a medium and a dark again for highlighting. So that's the medium. And then I'm coming in and just adding the dark to the left hand side of each of the centers again to add the shadows. Starting to look good. All right. There's butterflies in here. I decided to do those in lilac, so I'm using violet and iris, the lighter color first, and then again, I'm going to come back in and highlight near the body with the darker color, just like that. Yes, liking it. All right, here's the second way to do it. Grab three colors of ink and some blending brushes, and you're going to divide your panel basically into three. Start at one of the ends and 
ink blend the three colors in. This is a much faster and easier way to do this, but you don't get as much detail. We get the detail, you just don't get the color changes. Okay, so I'm putting my green in the middle. I think this is perfection. And surf and ocean were the two teal colors that I've been using. This is lemonade. And that's going to be my top panel. And in a bit, I'm going to show you how to highlight these a little bit more with a couple more techniques. Okay, so we got that one finished and I'm just comparing it to the other one. For the little small guy, I'm going to do two colors. I'm going to do purple on the bottom. And then I thought originally I was going to do yellow, but I changed my mind for two things. I went to the darker purple, so I believe this is iris, yes, because I really want this to pop, especially with one of the other techniques I'm going to show you. And I'm turning it around, and I've decided to do the ocean. I started looking at yellow. Nope. I'm going to do ocean. Okay, so getting the blending brush out and just finishing off the top. And this one's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to get more than two colors in there. But it's pretty. Okay, so here's my three that I'm going to be playing with today. And I also did another one of the large ones. And here is how you can make them pop. Take a pigment ink, a white pigment ink, ink pad, and rub it gently over the top and it will highlight your embossing. This is nice and subtle, it's very soft, and it's really quite pretty. The downside is, as the ink dries, it uh, is not as bright as it is when it's wet. So here's an alternative. We are going to heat emboss it. So you're going to use a anti-static, then you're going to take a juicy Versamark ink pad, gently rub it over, Cover it with the white embossing powder, shake off any excess, and heat set it with your heat tool. And that will add permanent white to the embossed areas. And I decided I like this because it stood out a little bit more. I was having a hard time with the ink really disappearing. The white just really absorbed right in. Okay, and I'm just showing you that I'm doing the top part. And I do them half at a time because it's hard to hold on to them without getting your fingerprints all over them. And then the embossing powder would stick to where my fingers were because I have hot little hands. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this little tag. And this is a cute little gift tag. It would also be cute on a smaller card, like maybe a 4x4 four four, or a slim line, a mini slim line. And I'll show you in a minute how I did the ribbon for the top of this tag. Okay, so I'm just finishing off embossing that, and there we go. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Okay, I got my wax seal kit out, and we're going to make the little wax seal that I am going to embellish one of my cards with, and I'm just showing you the mushroom one that I'm not playing with. We're going to play with the peony one. So I've got my candle lit. You want to uh, let it warm up, and you want to put your spoon on top of the little stand, and then pick out which color you're going to use. I've decided I want gold for mine because I'm going to also have some gold thread as a highlight. So I've heated this up. I did four of them. I find that the ovals need a little bit more uh, wax than the round ones do. And then you're going to press your seal in there. And then while your spoon is hot, use a folded in half paper towel and clean out the spoon. Get rid of all the residue of the wax so you don't mix it in with your next color. Okay, and that's really hot, so be careful where you put it down. Uh, you don't want to put it down on your gray protective mat. It will melt it. All right, so now we are going to add some highlights. And this is a special pen that Spellbinder sells. Deco Color Premium Gold Metallic Marker. There is also a silver one that you can get. It's got a bit of a chisel tip, so it's really easy to add ink to the embossed areas of the wax seal. Isn't it pretty? Okay, now it's time to start putting the cards together. I added a little bit of blue to my butterflies. I just wanted to show that I touched those up a little bit. And I used the meandering floral embossing folder for my background. These panels are four and a quarter by five and a half. And I did a white one and a teal one. I couldn't decide which one I liked more. So I'm just kind of auditioning them right now, uh, deciding which one I want. I want the teal one. 
Okay, so I am going to use two-sided tape because this is embossed. I don't like to use my tape runner. Uh, I also don't like to use white glue because I find that it kind of warps sometimes. So I like this tear tape. And this is from scrapbook.com. I use it all the time. It's nice and strong, but it's really easy to use. It's easy to tear, but it will hold an embossed piece onto your card base without any problems at all. And you want it to stay there. You don't want it to kind of peel off in the corners. You do all this work, you want it to look professional. So I use my score buddy, the top left-hand corner, and I line everything up so that I can get it in there. And I don't know if you've noticed, but when you do embossing, you sometimes have a little bit of a white overhang because the embossing takes up some of your paper and makes it smaller. So get a good pair of scissors, and I love these ones from Spellbinders. They're nice and sharp, they're long, and they're also non-stick, which is awesome. Okay, so we're going to wrap some gold ribbon around the art piece, and I'm just setting my tape aside. Got another piece ready for the other tail end. I'm wrapping it. And then I'm going to come around to the back and I'm going to finish off, tape it down so it doesn't move, and then trim off the excess. And then I'm going to use some foam squares and I'm going to mount this onto my card front. Okay, so you just wanna add a whole bunch of foam squares, remove the protective covers, and line up your piece. And then next we're going to glue on the wax seal. I'm using Barely Art Glue for the fine tip. And I'm just noticing that my rope is moving where I don't want it to. Okay. Covering it with an acrylic handle and setting it aside to dry. You want to use a lot of glue on that because it's going on to an embossed surface. And I'm just showing you the difference. I did that large one um, with some ink blending instead of getting right in and doing the detailed ink blending another way to build the card. And I am using the Sentiments Animum Blooms. I die cut it in gold and white. And I'm going to add it to the front of this card if I ever get the panel on straight. <laughs> that was bugging me, it was a little bit crooked. Okay, and again, using a lot of glue because we're gluing it down to a unsmooth surface. And then we're going to embellish it with some gold gems. And I'm going to add three here. I like odd numbers, three or five. And this is kind of a small space, so just three. And I also like to use three different sizes. So starting at the bottom with the large, working my way up to the medium and the small, just to, to highlight the sentiment. For the third card, got this lovely sealed for summer embossing folder. And this one is four by five and a quarter so that we have a white border. I did that on purpose because I wanted the white border to match the art piece. And I'm just showing you that this time I'm using foam strips. And this is a Big Mama foam tape roll from Simon Says Stamps. It's really good value and it's nice and skinny. So you do get a little bit of 3D on your cards, but it's not enough that it requires extra postage at the post office. Okay, and you also notice that I use the scallop label and tag dies for some gold trim behind my art piece. I thought that went kind of nicely. And I'm going to add another hello sentiment to this one. And what I was just showing you there is I've got two panels. Um, they're both inked the same way, but one of them has the white embossing on it, the other doesn't. So I guess it depends on how much you want it to show. So for the third one, we're doing the tag and I'm just trimming the ends of the ribbon that I used and that's all completed. The ribbon is May Arts. It's called Wrinkled Faux Silk Ribbon. And what I do is I pile it all up onto my glass mat and then I spritz it with Distress Oxide Sprays, let it dry, and then you get this beautiful ribbon that you can use on your projects. And I can make it any color I want. That's it for me today. Uh, grab one of these 3D emboss and cut folders. I know you are going to absolutely love it. Everything I use today is listed underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where you will get the cutting details uh, for the sizes of cardstock that I used. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified of future videos. And here's a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time.